Hey guys, Enter the Stars. So I was thinking ab back to some fond memories when my children were small. And we all s always look, used to look forward to the fall. Because that was the time where we could get out the warm clothes, dress up, and make our first trip to the pumpkin patch. Where the kids would run around in the straw. And I always remember commenting to my ex-wife, how the light had changed and that could she notice it that things fell just a little bit differently on the trees and the plants and our reality and it all seemed to happen on one day now it's easy for us to talk ourselves out of that and say well maybe it happened gradually and I just didn't quite notice it but thinking back throughout the years I don't think it was in my head, and I'm going to show you why. Now, this is the UN map. We're going to get into the Book of Enoch today, and how Enoch describes a flat path of the sun. He describes gates rising up and shifting like a gear shift. Not a gradual, but shifts, actual shifts. And that could explain the change in light that happens in the fall. Now it probably happens in other seasons, but we just don't notice it. Of course, this is the flat earth model, but the model that I believe is a creation that is based off of God's creation is the lens shaped earth, like a contact lens. So imagine fitting this map over a convex contact lens sitting on a table and we living on the surface of it not under it see the devil tries his hardest to be like the most high that is his goal he will counterfeit every single thing that God does so what better way to throw everybody off than say we live under a dome instead of on the surface of it because under a dome would lock you into this small world and you would feel as though God doesn't care because he locked us in a petri dish where in fact we live on the surface of the dome and, and we can this heavens are before us infinite heavens God is reflecting back at us but we'll get into all that but first I want to address this extrapolating this image out we're looking at the owl now don't run away because Satan wants to be like the Most High he wants to establish his kingdom on this earth so what he does is he takes the miracle of God and I'm gonna show you from the book of Enoch how the Sun actually follows this owl path and I believe it's in a figure eight but see the devil wants to mimic God have you not believe in him and worship him here on earth and he uses the signs and symbols to, to do that to control your mind and to confuse you but there are way too many synchronicities within the Bible for all of this to be evil and I believe in my heart it is not and I woke up this morning feeling like I did when I was four years old and I knew I had a toy waiting for me when I would awaken I literally feel like I've been transformed after learning this knowledge and I hope that you feel it too so the book of Enoch and we'll get into that travels in this path it says that it rises up through the north to reach the east gate now we got to think about reflections here and how this works and we're gonna pull this apart today and I'm not sure what we're gonna find but we're gonna dig but first why would Satan choose this image, Moloch? Extrapolate all this out. Think about where these curves go. And that's why we've been led on this journey. Now Satan didn't create the stars in the movement of the stars. So we have to ask ourselves, why would he choose the owl knowing that someone could figure this out? Because life is a giant process. And thanks to the subscriber, I was brainstorming this with yesterday. As we go up toward the heavens, 
everything gets less dense. It's like a giant arrow pointing toward God. We start in space, the vacuum, down to the upper atmosphere where there's little oxygen, a little less dense. Then we get to the air, more dense. Oceans, more dense. Earth, more dense. Rocks, more dense. And finally, molten rock. Hell, which is the most dense. That is what Satan is trying to recreate on this earth. Do not sacrifice your children to Molech in the fire. Satan has his own little hell here on earth and he requires sacrifice but fortunately for us our creator does not require that let's get into this you guys now here we are at the equator and this is Kenya Africa and the first thing we noticed in a couple videos ago is that the Sun is moving at the exact same speed as the stars behind it now that should be impossible because the distance from our earth to the sun is like hand, holding your hand in front of your face. Your face is earth, your hand is the sun. And then the next nearest star being literally New York City from wherever you're at, unless you live in New York and pick a further distance. 260,000 times further away and we are right here the sun is right up against us and we are told the stars are way further away so how is it that the sun never gains ground on the stars and that it's always on this sheet of stars following the stars well the amazing thing is Enoch tells us that the sun is attached to the stars now how would he know this is the question he knew it because he was shown and he tells us that he was shown by the angels he says I saw the winds which turn the sky which cause the orb of the Sun and of all the stars to set it's all in one wind and over the earth I saw the winds which support the clouds that's a second wind he describes all this in the book of Enoch that's exactly what we see in the night sky cannot be denied I'm showing you right here so then I got into more about the Sun and its path and I must admit I got a little confused because it says that the Sun comes up through the north to get to the east but then it sets in the west comes up through the north to get into the east it sounds like it's going in two different directions and doesn't fit really any models doesn't fit a globe model doesn't fit a flat earth model and it really doesn't fit the dome shaped model the lens model that that we've been looking into so let's get into that because I think we figured it out so the secret is revealed by following the stars right because we just showed you how the Sun is attached to the stars on that wind so we follow the path of the Sun now this is the northern hemisphere this is the southern pole star the southern hemisphere this is the equator north south east and west is in front of us somewhere but we don't see it so Enoch says the Sun sets in heaven and returning by the north to proceed towards the east is conducted so as to enter by that gate and illuminate the face of heaven so included within the path of the Sun is heaven now let's try to wrap our brains around around this and this verse 8 is key and that is what we're gonna pull apart the Sun sets in heaven and returning by the north to proceed toward the east is conducted as to enter by that gate and illuminate the face of heaven 
And now we are going to get into some ultimate and profound truth. Here we are inside your eye. This is the back of the lens. The yellow dots are the equator. And as we've outlined, when you're standing on the equator, you see the stars going straight out from you at the equator. And when you look to the northern hemisphere, which is right here, they start to spin clockwise. Now remember, the sun is on this wind. Follow me on this. When you look to the northern hemisphere, the stars are spinning the other direction. And I want you to look, if you're standing on this equator and you're looking down, the stars are spinning in the other direction. And look at the reverse rings. Can you now see the truth? And all this is, is a reflection on the backdrop of this large disco globe, the internal mirror. This is how God does it. And it's amazing because he's right back here behind this retina. He's the pineal gland. He is the ultimate, the alpha and the omega. Now, think about the sun being on one of these tracks. We'll use this ring. Rises up through the north. To rise in the east. Do you see how this works? It's reflections and rises up through the north to return to the east. Rises up through the north to heaven to return to the east. And as it projects down onto this lens, it creates a perfect ring. And so Jesus asked his followers, and now I ask you today, do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? The eye and the ear are the two witnesses of God's creation. A flat ring, a projection, rises up through the north to return to the east. And this is simply fascinating. This is a, another first truth bestowed by the Holy Spirit. Simply amazing. And here are the words of Enoch regarding the sun. The sun sets in heaven and returning by the north to proceed towards the east sets in heaven, here's heaven, returns by the north to proceed to the east. And even though it's doing this motion, it reflects down onto this surface, our earth. We're on the outside of this contact lens. And this is what we see, and we're seeing it right now in real time. Because the sun, remember, is affixed to the stars. And this is the star pattern we see in the sky. And Enoch continues on. It talks about that the sun is instructed to do so. So that it can illuminate the face of heaven. And that's exactly what we see in this model. In the same manner goes forth in the first month by a great gate. It goes forth through the fourth of those six gates which are at the rising of the sun. And in the fourth gate through which the sun with the moon proceeds in the first part of it. There are 12 open windows from which issues out a flame when they are opened at their proper periods. And these are our solar flares. And I can almost bet you that if you or one of these channels that tracks the solar flares BP Earthwatch, if you were to look at where these flares are coming out of on the surface of the sun, you would probably notice that they only come out of 12 holes. B 
because this is what Enoch has said, because he was shown the secrets of heaven. Then the sun rises in heaven. It goes forth through these fourth gate, 30 days. And by, so it goes through each of these gates for a period of time. And the gates that it goes through are the six gates, the six gates of the UN model. And again, because of the reflective effect of the retina in the back of the eye, the globe internal mirror, even though the sun is following the star paths in that figure eight pattern, it reflects down on earth as a ring and it follows each of these gates. There are six, one, two, three, four, five, and they're showing us their dominion over the secret knowledge here. This is Rome. That is the sixth gate. How do the seasons work? Well, when the sun is on this gate, it never quite gets to the North Pole. So the North Pole stays cold. But in their summer, they see the sun all day long and all night. It never sets as it rotates around them. During their summer, we are experiencing our, our spring. Do you see how this works? When it goes in through the next gates, this is our summer because it is over the top. The sun is in this next ring over the top of the northern hemisphere. But when it is on this internal ring near the going right over the Arctic Circle, the people in Antarctica don't see the sun. It stays dark for months at a time because the sun is so far away. Remember, this is all mirrors and gates. And the same thing applies as the sun progresses on each track. And that's why you sense a shift in the light because God is controlling the sun coming in and out of these gates. And that is the truth. And the sun goes on proceeding through its gates as Enoch outlines here. Lengthening and shortening the days. How does that work? Well, we go back to our map and the days get shorter as we don't see as much of the sun. Let's give you an extreme example. It's summer in the Southern Hemisphere. The sun is in this track directly overhead, warming this portion of the sky. And the sun is in its full glory as it's going through this ring just away from the outer edge. Well, the people in the Northern Hemisphere are not going to see the sun as brilliantly and as brightly. And in fact, standing on the lens, that sun is not going to be in the sky for as long as it is for these people as it rises and sets because of the angle of the rays of the sun. And that's about as simply as I can put it. And that is how we get our seasons. And ultimately, this is what we see when projected down. But as I just demonstrated to you, it follows the sheet of stars. Just think of it as a reflective effect and know that what Enoch says is true, that the sun passes through the glory of heaven each and every day. And God has the ultimate power over these heavenly bodies. And so you see the earth is neither flat nor round. And what way for the enemy to confuse and confound, knowing that the prophecy of the last days would come true, that knowledge would increase. What better way for him to confuse and confound than to create the black and the white, to create the flat and the globe, 
all the while the truth right in the middle on a contact lens surface. Both happen. The sun goes up and down from heaven to earth as well as side to side from our point of view. Simply unbelievable. Anyway, you guys, take care and be safe and be blessed. All the glory and credit goes to the Creator. <laughs>